Monday from 10 to 12 noon, Wednesday from 12 noon to 2 p.m., Wednesday again from 9 to 11 p.m., Thursday from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m., Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m., Saturday again from 7 <coughs> to 8 p.m. We're also on the web, www.drwheelerfullgospel.com, www.drwheelerfullgospel.com. Call me on my cell, 810-423-2433. Our service at the church here at the Full Gospel Christian Church, 5901, Dr. Martin Luther King, Sunday School, 9.30 a.m., morning worship, 11 a.m., evening service, 7 p.m., Thursday Bible study, 7 p.m., Wednesday intercessory prayer, 1.30 p.m., Thursday, like tonight, Bible study, 7 p.m. That's something I'd like to read to you. When you learn to learn that others may learn, then you know. Because that statement came out of my heart and not the secretary's heart. She wrote it like this. When you learn to learn that others may learn, then you will know. That's a lie. That's not what God said to me. So don't try to correct the English. You missed the anointing. Here's what God said to me years and years ago. <clears throat> when you learn to learn that others may learn, then you know. He didn't say when you learn that others may learn, then you will know. That's supply that suggests that before they learn, you don't know. You got these signs, you know. <clears throat> All right. All right. Our website, www.drwheelerfullgospel.com. Church phone number, you ain't going to never get me there, 785-9851. Our fax is 810-785-9859. The best way you can get me is on my cell, 810-423-2433. I'm going to tell you our television times again on channel 17. We own other television stations too, but <clears throat> I got before me our times on channel 17. Sunday from 8 to 10 a.m., Monday from 10 to 12 noon, Wednesday from 12 noon to 2 p.m., Wednesday again from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., Thursday from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m., Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m., Saturday again from 7 to 8 p.m. Correct what God said to me again. When you learn to learn that others may learn, then you know. If it was like my secretary wrote it, it would read like this. When you learn to learn that others may learn, then you will know. That ain't what he said. So that implies you're only going to know when the other people understand. That ain't what God said to me, line secretary. When you learn to learn that others may learn, then you know. Now that puts what you know in direct proportion to their hunger. You have to teach over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So our subject tonight is what it's been ever since I've been a pastor. Grace and mercy. We're going to start at John 1, and we're going to read this subject. Grace and mercy. Two entities, they are really written backwards because God was merciful before grace. God always been merciful. But my Bible said grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So where was truth in the Old Testament when the Old Testament people got say they look forward to it? We're looking backward to it. So it's at the center of all things. Our subject is grace and mercy. Now you could spend a lifetime on any one of those words. John 1 and 1, in the beginning 
was the word. Notice I'm going to repeat myself. Now, it didn't say at the beginning. That would signify time on this side of eternity. But in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Look, and the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him there was not anything made that was made. In him was, way back there, life, before there was anyone to receive it. And the life was the light of man before God created man. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not, because there was no man in darkness. Man wasn't created yet. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through that light, Jesus, might believe. John was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of Jesus, that is the light of the world. <clears throat> John 1, 9, that Jesus was the true light. Now, that's not the name of a church. You can call yourself true light, etc., etc. It's okay. But the name of the church in God's Bible is the church of God 110 times. But if you're going to get a tax exemption in this state, you've got to have a different name than them other names. As long as you know that that's the name of Jesus, if it knee should bow and tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's wonderful. That is mucho bueno. That's mock the V. That's vondubar. See those different languages? God taught them to me. He can teach you too. But don't you know who teach you how to walk on ice? You don't know how to walk on ice. One step at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Zip by. You have to learn how to walk on ice like you have to learn how to walk on a floor. Now, when you were trying to walk on a floor, you fell more time than you did when you walked on ice. But you were young and your bones were soft. Ah, bang, zip, boom, get up. Fall down, you had to call the ambulance. You can't be sad sitting in this class. Because I'm going to tell you about the one that's the joy of your life, which is your spiritual strength. Our subject is. Grace and mercy, those two things. The eighth verse in St. John 1 said, uh, <clears throat> John said that he was not the light. <clears throat> now understand this and learn, but was sent. Now your question is, who sent John that was born six mo months before Jesus to preach Jesus. God. Jesus wasn't born when John went preaching. Eight verse, St. John 1. John was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light by the Father of that light, God the Father. That light, that was the true light that's not the name of God's church either. You can call it that if you want to, but that's not the name of it. That was the true light. Now look at the vasticity of it. John 1, 9. Jesus was that true light, look, that lighted every man that cometh into this world. Now it's in the Bible. I don't care if you were born in somewhere, 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 nowhere. You were born in the jungles, jungles of Africa in a $6 million home in Manhattan. At John 1 and 9, say, Jesus was that true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. That's what it says. So no man have an excuse for not knowing God. But it's a devil job to help you forget your inheritance. 
John 1.10. Jesus was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. It's the same now. I guarantee you there are more people out to the shopping center returning that stuff that they didn't want because it was too big or too, so we could have it by the 25th of December because it's traditional. Let's get it to them before Christmas. They make the birth of Jesus a traditional holiday. And they buy things and give it to people and call that time Christmas. You see that word Chris? Must. What do I got to do with Christ? You need to know this. That the time that Jesus was born in he owned it before there was time. He called it eternity. So he took a slice out of eternity that called time while we lived, died there to get us out of that slice back into eternity. It ain't got to do with danger. What you talking about? Ain't no jingle bell. Well, yes, it is. And let me tell you what the major shopping centers have done with the, what Christmas. Is. You see them people out front with them little bells? You can only hear them when you get about three feet from them. Ding, 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 ding. You used to hear them from this side of the, the, huh? Drawing too much attention away from the money. Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter is all about getting money. You need to look into that word Halloween. Halloween don't mean Hollywood. When you pray, you don't say Halloween be that. Do you say that? <laughs> huh? Devil is tricky. I'm trying to put hellish thoughts into our prayer, but not mine. Because I keep mine simple. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I wish. You can't do nothing with that. Too simple. You have to get deep. Somebody called me from somewhere and said, I'm in this denomination, and he already got a PhD. He said, they're requiring that I be a Dane or bishop. He, you can appoint a bishop. He said, this person is over 20 churches and I said, now how many members in each one of the churches? I talked to a man today that used to be in that organization. He said, well, the most I ever seen was 26. Listen to me. The false doctrines are dying. And those that are falser are growing. 15, 20, 60,000 people. And the preacher preached 20 minutes. And they say to me, the street, I, I, I like you, dog, but it don't take all that. I said, what is all that? You know. I said, when you go shopping and you're looking for a suit, do you watch your watch while you're watching the suit? Oh, no, that's different. I said, that's my answer. I said, you know you can wear a different kind of suit. You got different size? I said, yes. It's called the armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Dress yourself up with holiness and purity, which is the power of the Holy Ghost unto salvation to everyone that believe. See, see, there you go now quoting scripture. Do you know the only person that get irritated when you quote the scripture is the devil? 
It's like taking a fire and put it in his bosom. He can't stand you reading this book or quoting this book and say, you know, God sure been good to me. God, Lord, I thank you. The devil hate that, that we love. He wouldn't be a demon if he didn't do that. So I counsel a pastor today because Detroit took me to Red Lobster, you know. Yeah. I said, Jesus, I'm a McDonald man, you know what I'm saying? But you have to learn, listen to me. The thing you invest into a pastor don't make him richer or poor. He is what he is because God made him what he is. And you can't get more information out of a person by impressing them about the price of the food you feed him. That, that's the worldly. What about coming here and kneeling at this altar and saying, we're not going to get up till we hear from you? They miss it. I, I go out and eat up too much today. But I know all the time you need Jesus in your situation. Before you talk to that person, you need to first talk to God about you. So God will give you words to say to that person that you feel like it's damn in you. Go to God. Don't nobody got the answer but God. They, they, they forget them old songs. Jesus is the answer for the world today. And they think they can go to a pastor and the pastor will deliver them. I don't got no deliverance. I'm just one that been delivered by the deliverer. So I can take you to the deliverer and show you how to be delivered. Surrender. Forget about what man has done and remember what God has done. Forget it. Cast your eyes up on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this world will go strangely them and the light is, uh, is, uh, of his glory and Grace, our subject is grace and mercy. And I'm in St. John 1. The 8th verse says, John the Baptist was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. Now, if Jesus is the light of the world and we are his one body, we don't have to go out and just talk. We just go out and be ourselves, and our light will shine. Oftentimes, the way you live shine brighter than what you say. Because if you got a whole lot to say, you're going to have a lot of me and I and and um. So what you need to do? See this word like it is. See it like it is. Read it like it is. Leave it like it is. And you'll get where he is. In Bible college the other night, a pastor, one of our students, asked me to explain a certain scripture to him. He's a pastor. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Who brings up the rear? The teacher. They say, we know that Jesus is a teacher come from heaven. For no man can do these things that he do except God be with him. Now, they knew that Jesus was a teacher come from heaven. And they marveled at the thing that he could do. But they didn't marvel over who he was, the son of almighty God. They missed that. It's right here in this book. We'll see it. We'll see it. That's why it's not the knower of the word that is justified. You take all this book, remember every word, every period. 
if you don't see the author of the word, you lost. Because in John 1, we have to stop and see the simplicity of the word. In the beginning was what? The word. Now the last word in this book is a man. Not a man, a man. Because God came flesh. He came in the spirit. Amen. He himself received his own spirit and called himself his own son. And he came back as a spirit of himself and sanctified himself as the son and called his son the Holy Ghost. This, Because he's the same yesterday today and forevermore. Don't let nobody elevate you. I heard Paul say, and he spoke nine languages. He said, I am the least, he did say, of all the apostles. But he didn't stop there. He said, but nevertheless, <laughs> He's going to end up giving God glory. That's the purpose of the church. Give God glory and reach for what? The soul of man. That's the responsibility of the church. Now, now you can't reach for the soul of man and then give God glory. No, no. When you give God glory, you see the power to reach for the soul of man. And every soul you reach for is not going to come. You need the power of God to forgive that one for not coming and pray for him that he will. We, we, we forget sometimes they beat Jesus to death, killed him. I heard Jesus pray, Father, <laughs> yeah, he did say it, forgive them. They know not what they do. That is, they don't know who I am. Paul didn't know neither. Until God met him in the book of Acts. Fell off his beast on the ground. And heard the voice of Jesus. Saw. Ha <laughs> ha. He knew before he got to be Paul, you see. Saw. Why persecute thou me? And look how brilliant Saul was. He said, who art thou, Lord? He didn't know he was persecuting God's people. He was using the law to insist that people obey the law and forgot the law of love. And he asked Jesus, who art thou? There was no debate. And Jesus identified himself as the body. He said, I am those that you're persecuting. That is, I am the church. Look what Paul said. What would you have me to do? If that ain't surrounding the trouble. Suffer for it, though. Die it for it. You need to get this. When you make up your mind, I'm talking about in the spirit, I'm going to worship God. Suffering becomes elevated. Whenever you testify, I'm going to worship God in spite of all hell. That's exactly what's going to happen. The devil, he doesn't want us to worship God in the beauty of what? Of holy. He don't want that. And he'll do things through people to make you think 
just hold on to this ain't working. Now that proves that it is working because it irritates your enemy. You know you got an enemy out there. But this book said, your voice folds. It did say it. Lives in your own household. God ain't going to take that back. But he didn't say we had to surrender to that foe. Now that's not a husband, that's not a wife. It's a devil in your house. Amen. But never mind him being in your house. If he doesn't, be in, if he can't get in your heart, he can't control your soul. Doc, I would come down there, but all you do is read the book. What? Last year, I saw a certain bus driver that got that dog on that. Come from Detroit looking for the bus station downtown. She was right there. Got lost. Now, how? My Bible said, put no comfort. I said to her, hey, my heart. Put no confidence in man. Put your trust in God. Look like you would drive an internationally known bus 70 miles and get lost. Now, they found Flint. Listen to me now. But they couldn't find the bus station where people get on and off. She didn't read the map. This is the map from anywhere on earth to heaven. You got to read this map. But you see, what you need to do, you need to do what they did in the, in the army, you know. They have a dry run. You, you go first by yourself. Yes, sir. Because if you don't know the way, see, they had people in the older days, they called them map makers. And they looked yonder, and they paid more attention to the map they made, because that's their conference. They keep checking, well, I think there's something on the other side of this river, but I know I can go from this river back to where I came from. So I'm going to use this river as a compass to show me which way. And once you get across that river, it's new territory. Once you get saved, whole new territory. Now, when you're a sinner and you're around sinners, you know they're going to raise hell. But you ain't seen nothing. Until you make the decision, I'm going to come out from among these people. When you do that, that job is to come get you. And they do it with their mouth. They try to condemn you. You think you something. You ain't no more than me. Just hush up. Just, just be quiet. You're trying to get a weapon that comes out of your mouth. Even a fool is considered to be wise when he holds his speech. Just don't talk. Learn how to pray with your mouth shut. Come on, help her out. She act like I know what I'm talking about. Learn how to pray with your mouth shut. See, the, the greatest prayer I ever prayed, Lord, I, what? Thank you. I pray it right now, but I, I pray it with my hand. When I do that, the devil don't know what I'm doing. He think I'm praising God. I am, but he don't know. The devil cannot interpret God's kinds of tongues. Ain't nobody saying nothing out there. I don't care if you say nothing or not. Even when you speak in tongues, God have to give a gift to someone else to interpret what he told that other person to say. So if God have to give a saint the interpretation of his language, the devil don't have a chance. And there's a type of tongue that's greater than the tongues you're accustomed to. Here's that tongue. 
Because oh, I heard you. <laughs> yeah! But you only get that when trouble is shown up on you. And sometimes I say, oh, Jesus. Gone just like that. There's a language beyond tongues. And only your heart can speak it. And only your God can interpret it. And most of the time, oh. <laughs> God said, I'll fix it. So your intellect can't get into spiritually heaven. But your spirit can. Sometimes I say, oh, Jesus. So I'll take care of it. I didn't tell him what I wanted. I just said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> huh? Whole different world. So when you do that, expect for the sinner to see you as being lunatic. And you say, oh. <laughs> they don't know your soul just had a conversation with the Holy Ghost. They don't know that. So what we have to do is read what God wrote to us to read to them to help them to see God show is a good God. Now that's good information but if you don't allow him to be good to you, it won't work. It won't work. Our subject is grace and mercy. And I'm in John 1, the 8 verse. said, John, he was not that light. Now look at your ministry, John 1 and 8. But he was sent. Read the rest of it. To be witness of that light. And the scripture said, let your light so shine that men would see your good works and glorify God. Your light is to give God glory. I didn't say your lip was. I said your life and your light is. The ninth verse in John 1, our subject gives grace and mercy. The eighth verse, see, he was not the light. John was not the light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. Now, if you didn't keep on reading, if you have read that before, you wouldn't know who that light was. So the gospel is holiness in its most simple form. The ninth verse say, that light was the true light. I was laying in my bed the other day, and the light was coming through my window. And the Lord said, do you know how far the sun is from you? 90 million miles. And it just, the light in the room was yellow compared to the light that's 90 million miles away. Good God Almighty. You, how you, and he keep us just far enough away so we won't cook. And if you're born and raised down south in August, seem like that sun is just above your head, tall that tree. Brother, it can get hot down south. You hear me? That sun is still 90 million miles away. You can't even compass that. What is one million? And how long did it take that sun to come on for the light to get here? Now, I studied physics. I know all about that stuff. <clears throat> but your head ain't big enough to... <laughs> Jesus is the light of the world, not just the light of the earth. And when he shine on you, he give you command. 
Let your light so shine that men will see your good behavior and give God glory. That's the purpose of our life. Give a God glory. And then reach for the soul of man. You can't reach for the soul of man prior to giving God glory. Grace and mercy is our subject. And I'm teaching here in John 1. The fourth verse said, in him was life. Inside Jesus is life. And the light was the light. The life was the light of men. So we're not talking about a physical light that you get from a battery or a, 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 a bulb you threw in. The, the, ninth, the fourth verse in John 1 said, in him was life. And the life that was in him was the light of men. Don't underestimate that John 1, 4. In Jesus was life. Now look what the devil tried to do. The devil knew that, St. John 1, 4. So what did he do? He crucified Jesus. Thinking he had put out the light. But in three days, he set him up. And whosoever will, let him come. The devil tried to put out the light that Jesus is by killing him. Give me oil for my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil for my lamp, I pray. Give me oil for my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break. Look what you're saying. Give me oil when I'm in darkness. Oil, the anointing. Keep me anointed till I see the light, Jesus. Our subject is grace and mercy. We're in St. John 1. In Jesus, the fourth verse, in Jesus was life. And the life of Jesus was the light of men. Understand that, John 1, 4. And Jesus was life. He was full of life. And that life was full of light for men. So you shine when you live the life of Christ because he's the light of God. When you're holy, men can see God by the way you live, not the way you talk. Now the devil knows this. So he's trying to keep people away from this book. But God made a way and God said, whosoever will, say to you, let him come and drink the waters of life freely. Jesus is the water of life because he is life in himself. Mm. Fifth verse in St. John 1, our subject is grace and mercy. And the light shined in darkness. And the darkness didn't understand it. But that didn't put the light out. See, Jesus was, is, and always be that light. Until 1 Corinthians 15, 28, and he going back, back up into the Father of lights, that God might be all in all, and you'll get back to Genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning. So St. John 1 sounds like Genesis 1. But Genesis 1 is the plan to bring Genesis 1 in the Genesis, in the, in the John 1. 
that is John 1 is Genesis 1 in action. In the beginning was the word. Genesis 1. John said, yeah. And the word was made flesh. And we saw him. And we beheld him as the only glory of God. So, see, Christ is God in Jesus. Christ is spirit. The word is spirit. And when the word was made flesh, he wasn't called Christ. He was called Jesus. Amen. Now, in the beginning, he was called Christ. Christ is spirit, and the flesh called Jesus. But they were so much one until you can read Jesus died and Christ died. Well, if Christ had died, then who raised Jesus up? These are dispensational teachings, and you have to listen and slow down, and you have to pray the prayer we always pray, Lord, help me. This is too big for the human mind. But we're not using the human mind. We're reading to that human soul, that inner person that can perceive all that God is. <laughs> you see that in 1 Corinthians 13. Our subject is grace and mercy. Seven verse in John 1. The same came for a witness. Now that's that's what that's our business. St. John 1 7. John came for a witness to bear witness of the light. That's what we do. But you can't be darkness and witness light. A sinner can't do this. It's not his job to show people how good God is because he don't know neither. But once you get a good understanding, you hear this song go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere I go. <laughs> you got to get this for you. Go, just don't run. That was a battle one time. It wasn't going good for Israel. And one soldier came. <laughs> and the king said, how is the battle? To take him out there and kill him. God ain't no joke, church. So I don't care how far you ran, how long you ran, if you don't have the message of the army and you can't tell people how the army is going, you dead. Think about that next time you engage your 150-piece choir. And let the choir sing till the roach start shouting. This Bible tell me, give place for the word. Nothing you can do can substitute to take the place of the word of God. Because John 1 and 1 and Genesis 1 and 1 say in the beginning. God, the last verse in God's word say, yea, a man. And everything laid down from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. There's a man called Christ. It was Christ that told Jesus to tell the people that was crucified him, destroy this body. God said, tell them, in three days I'll raise it up. Came up too. He ain't went back in neither. How come people don't like to preach the resurrection? <clears throat> if you don't preach the resurrection of Jesus, then you haven't been risen. So Paul said, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. You got to say something about what price Jesus paid to save your soul. Nothing else will give you joy. Nothing. Any other feelings? Fictitious. 
a make-believe, a movie, a thing. But this book said, make known the good deeds of the Lord among the people. You know, church, God showed been what? Good to me. Tell it. Over and there ain't nothing else to say. St. John 3.16, look like everybody else can quote that. God so loved the world. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, his only fathered son. Look at the universality of it. That whosoever, anywhere, yes, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Plus nothing, minus nothing. That's the gospel. I tell you what my name is in heaven. The preacher man. Now you might not know what yours is, but you got one. You got that new name. I'm called the preacher man. So when I get to heaven, I'm going to have to change my name because there ain't going to be no preaching up there. But my name down here reflects the fact that I'm trying to get everybody to call upon the name of Shatanehe to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Because if you're not preaching Jesus, you ain't preaching the gospel. He is the Word. And the Word became flesh. And we held his glory as the only begotten of the Father full of grace and full of truth. Well, here it is right here, my subject. Talking about Jesus. Don't expect to feel the church building up when you keep saying the same thing over and over and over again. You know, saints, God really been good to me. Praise you, Jesus. I'll say that continually to the cloud bus. God been good to me. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Now, you, 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 you see, you rehearse. See, I, I had a band, you know. And we, had, we rehearsed what we are going to play to the public. And we rehearsed it so much until we got before the public, we were playing the same thing. You can rehearse reading this book. Get home by yourself. Look, listen to me now. You can't get by yourself and read this book and keep on reading this book and the book won't say something to you. If you read it enough, it'll talk right back to you. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. It's called prophecy. Discernment. John 1 and 1, I'm going to make sure I stay with the book. In Lansing, three weeks ago, we experienced something that was not of the Lord. The pastor had a mic and give it to different people and said, prophesy. You can't tell a person to prophesy. You ain't God. And even God won't tell you to prophesy without giving you something to speak. So prophecy is the voice of God. That's what prophecy is. You don't hear God, keep your mouth shut. This book here, saints, comes from God. And if you're going to get where this word came from, you've got to let, let this word be the road map back to God and Jesus is the engineer. He's the highway. Genesis 28. You see Jesus' body laying down on the earth. And the top of his body is in heaven. And I told you that other it was miraculous. The angel was going up and down on Jesus. Instantly. That's a miracle. Didn't you hear Jesus say, I am the way? 
I'm the truth and I'm the life. No man come to the Father. But by me, well, Genesis 28 says so. And Jacob said, this is an awesome place here. Then he said, he's looking at a rock now, a rock. He said, this is nothing shorter than the church of the living God. A rock. He saw Jesus. <laughs> Are y'all listening? I was subject to grace and mercy. Now listen to me. Don't read this book and try to hear God tell you something to tell somebody else. No, let them read the book. This is what God is saying to everybody. This is the prophecy of God. Don't you hear John in John 1 saying the same thing in Genesis 1 in the beginning? God? And then Jesus came and the last word in God's Bible is a man. Well, don't that agree with the scripture? And God was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld all his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, this is what we got here, our subject. That's what we got the subject from. So you see what we're doing? We're keeping our conversation centered on Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There ain't nothing else. There ain't nothing else. Because God is not the author of confusion, so he got one way to get into heaven, Jesus. You don't choose Jesus, you're born. I know you got the little dance team and they got their little flags, you know, and, and the little stuff. You won't find that in here. You see people dancing in the spirit, but you won't see them at church on Wednesday night rehearsing how to dance in the spirit. A praise is not a rehearsal. It's spontaneous. Thank you. People look at you. Just keep saying it. Just keep saying it. The devil don't want us praising God. Are you listening to me? And I tell people, God showed been good to me. And I brag about my age, you see. Huh? May I be 79. And somebody wrote a song, Every day with Jesus is sweeter. He did write it. It's sweeter than the day before. But you'll only experience this. See, you, you got to get above 50 in the 60 area. You know, when you got more things to look forward to than the thing to look backward for. Jesus said, when I come, will I find faith on the earth? Faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So Jesus, would I come? Am I going to find people reading what I said and got faith to go? You remember the ten virgins? Only five of them got in. They didn't take oil for the lamp. They didn't take obedience along with wisdom. Wisdom won't get you in. Obedience will. Teaching people the goodness of God would not necessarily get you in. Believing the truth that you're teaching about God will, that's a difference. Are you a Pharisee or a Sadducee? Grace and mercy is my subject. I don't care if I get out of St. John because St. John's in me. The seventh verse in St. John 1 say, John, the same <clears throat> came for a witness. That's what we are, saints. We are witness to bear witness of Jesus the light. For what reason? 
that all men through him might believe. You got to teach Jesus. Not stuff about him. You got to teach the person Jesus. And every now and then, you need to get kind of excited about it. <clears throat> because the joy of the Lord, the joy that God gives you, gives you strength to continue to praise him in spite of. Don't forget that in spite of stuff. I've been going to Jamaica 8, 10, 12 years. I didn't know <clears throat> I was teaching my brother-in-law's future wife because he was already married. She's in town now. And this other wife died. I don't, we don't know nothing. We don't know. I watched that woman on the microscope. That woman is holy. Man, see this man that held his hand kind of funny. <clears throat> he wrote a song. Please be patient with me because God ain't through with me yet. Well, then, why should I be patient with you? You don't deserve patience. You need the gospel. If God ain't through with you yet, huh? Don't worship songs. Worship God. This book tells me very explicit. I heard God say, come unto me. All you, everybody on the earth that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and I am lowly in heart. Did you see what Jesus said about himself? He said, I'm meek. And low in heart I means I'm low in spirit. When Jesus found this one fella, he said, Behold, I found this one fella, a man of my own heart. When you achieve something in the spirit, it's because you have a humble spirit. There's no such thing as a low down spirit. Huh? You call that depression. Amen. But if you want a blessing, God said, humble yourself. That ain't your spirit. That's your flesh. <clears throat> so if, if you have to humble yourself in the presence of God, it's a, not a request, it's, it's a command. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and this is the benefit. He will exalt you when you humble your flesh. In due time, the same amount of time that you take to humble your flesh before God, that's the same amount of time he's going to exalt your spirit. If you don't surrender now, God is there waiting on you. There's no place in God's church for self. Self must be slain. You have to Slay your own self. You have to ask the Lord like I do all the time. Lord, help me. He know what I'm talking about. He ain't talking about my soul. 
I'm talking about my body. Your body ain't by nothing. That's why it's got to die. Because sin touched it. Amen. And the prophet said, only by the grace of God I am what I am. And the grace of God was not bestowed upon me in vain. So I'm going to let the grace of God slay me. So the anointing of God is elevated when the flesh of man is decreased. So I'm working on some documents to send this one fellow that's in this organization. and He keep talking about how this Dr. Wheeler, oh man, you hear Dr. Wheeler? You know what he said? Bishop said, I don't want to hear no more about Dr. Wheeler. How come this fellow was talking about this Dr. Wheeler would tell you that the wages of sin is death? Yeah, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And he looked through his notes and he got it dated. This is what Pastor Wheeler told me at this day. Let's find it in the Bible. And the people get mad at me. Don't stop. If it's in the book, Live it first, then tell it second. Because when you tell it without living it, you lying. This one woman, soothsayer, witchcraft person, made the people in this place rich by soothsaying. Join herself to Paul in his evangelistic travel. And for months, she spoke the truth. She said, hear this man. He speaks to you the word of truth. For months and months and months. And my Bible said, irritated Paul. And he turned and said, silence. Come out of her. The devil was preaching the gospel but underneath the not, without underneath the anointing. You can say it, but if it's not anointed, same information, different effect. So Paul turned after months and months because she was teaching the truth without the anointing. And it's not the know of the word that is justified, but the doer of the work. She was preaching the gospel to the church without being anointed, taking those same words and making money for the soothsayers of the city. There's a whole lot of preachers like that now. To the extent that the pastor die, they'll look throughout the country, either the world, and bring 15 or 20 people to treat, preach what they call a trial sermon and the one that the board like, they'll hire him. Preferably, if he can sing real good, his wife can play piano. What are they looking for? Entertainment. This is not a show, brother. This is the real thing. I never read no scripture in this Bible, and you shall know the melody, and the melody shall make you free. It's getting so now, and I'm criticizing you, pastor that fall in this category. It's getting so now. If you can preach the word good, they'll put you in the pulpit. If you're preaching the good other word, you ain't getting nowhere. There's a difference, you know. You see, if the word don't come into your heart to anoint you, it can't come out of you anointed. So you have to be a vessel, meet for the master's use. And he'll use you anytime. 
He ain't want to. Any way he want to. I asked Paul, will you take it? Yes, I'll go. I ain't even told her why she was going to be preaching that day. She said, I'll go. The Bible said, be ye ever what? Don't be jealous. The Bible said, be ye ever what? Say ready. That's another hellish spirit. And I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. Go to hell now. So God quiet you out. But I just had a vision. I was down south and there was a big old rotten log there. I turned that log over. All kind of creeping things under that log. But I was between the log and the thing that was under the log. So it looked like the creeping thing was coming to me. And all they're trying to get back to the darkness. Don't assume. that you're more like God than you really are. God don't have a spirit of jealousy. Say amen, somebody. But love and peace, as in all the treasures of the living God. And my Bible tells me, <laughs> God is not a respecter of person. And my Bible tells me this. Whosoever will, let that one come. There are many gifts in this building right now. Many gifts. What we have to do, I say we, expose yourself to the giver and he will activate whatever gift he put in you and when that gift takes you there other gifts will take over so you don't know what you're going to do or what you're going to say and where you're going so the Lord said whosoever will let him come and drink the waters of life free female come on sataha See, we get away from the truth, but we get away from the old song. Where he lead me, I will follow. <laughs> Where he lead me, I will follow. Where he lead me, I will follow. I go with him. Do you see that song? With him all. Oh. The way when he called me, I will answer. 